These two ferns next to me are deer ferns. Deer fern is an evergreen, medium-sized fern. Superficially, it looks a little bit like sword fern, but it tends to be smaller, and there are a few other differences I'll point out. It grows in moist forests from low to high elevation. Another interesting thing about it is that most of the fronds are sterile. These fronds down here don't have any sori on them, so it actually produces a separate kind of frond called a fertile frond that has the sori. That's what these are. The family is Blechnaceae, and the scientific name is Blechnum spicant. Deer fern grows as a tufted cluster of fronds. In contrast to some of the other ferns we've been looking at, it has two distinct kind of leaves. The first are leathery, sterile leaves. That means they don't have any reproductive structures. They're about 20 to 80 centimeters long, and they're often pressed to the ground. They have purplish brown stipes, that's the stalk below the blade, and their leaflets are widely spaced and reduced towards the top and bottom. The second type of leaves are deciduous fertile leaves, meaning they have the reproductive structures on them. They grow upright from the center of the clump, and their leaflets are much narrower, and they're sometimes rolled around the sori. The sori are continuous, meaning they grow in a long line, rather than little circles like on some of the other ferns we're looking at, and they're distributed near the margins of the leaflet. Deer fern looks superficially like sword fern, so you might confuse them, but there are a few differences. Sword fern has leaflets that attach to the leaf axis on short stalks, whereas the leaflets on deer fern are attached along the whole base of the leaflet. Also, the stipes of deer fern are purplish at the base, whereas they're green on sword fern. Deer fern indicates a medium to wet soil moisture regime and a poor soil nutrient regime.